Today we're going to learn the third and final math strategy to help us when adding two two-digit numbers. In this lesson, we are going to look at how we can make new groups. Now there's two ways we can make new groups. We can show new groups above or we can show new groups below. I'm going to show you both of these strategies today. They're almost the same. There's just one little difference. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at our first example problem, 25 plus 41. Now, just like we did with the other strategies that we've been practicing, we always start by adding up the ones. Now in this problem, in the ones place, we have five plus one more. Can you help me out? What's five plus one more? That gives me six. Now what I like to do is write the total of the ones over here on the side. And I have to ask myself a very important question, second grade. Does my six ones have a 10 in it? Huh, if I have six, do I have 10 or more? No, I don't. So I'm going to take my six ones and I'm going to write them right underneath of the ones that I added. Something that you may want to do, you can put a line down through, we have our tens and our ones. If that helps you to organize your work, you can do that. So I added my ones. I didn't make any new tens. Now let's go over to the tens. We have two plus four or four plus two. I'm going to use my touch points, four, five, six. That means I have six tens and six ones. So my final answer at the bottom is 66. So in this strategy, it takes me much less time. There are no pictures and I can just add the tens and the ones. I always start with the ones first, if you remember from our other strategies. And then I can just move straight into the tens. Let's try another problem. Here's our next example, 39 plus 46. Now I'm going to put my line to start just so I have it ready to go. I also sometimes like to write a T for tens and an O for ones just so I remember which side they're on. And just like always, I start with the ones. Let's add up nine plus six more. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now I put my 15 on the side and I can see right away, I made a new 10, didn't I, second grade? 15 is greater than 10 ones. And I know if I have 10 ones, I can make a new 10. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my new 10 and watch where I move it. I'm going to move it up and it's going to go up in with my other tens because the tens are like a little family and they stick together. So my new 10 has to come over into the tens place. And then just like last time, I have five ones. So I'm going to pull my five ones down to the bottom. This is why I like to draw or write my number over to the side. I can see right away I made a new 10 and I can see how many I have in the ones. That's why I like to use that strategy. Now let's come over to the tens place. We have four, five, six, seven, eight. So my final answer is 80. Five. I had to make a new 10. Now, I personally like to put my new 10 above the other 10s. 
Let me show you another option that you have. Some people like to put their new 10 down here at the bottom. This is a personal choice. If you like to put your new 10 down at the bottom, you can, but you want to make sure that when you add up your 10s, you must add that new 10. Sometimes when we put it at the top, some students like to circle it to make sure that it stands out to them so they don't forget to add it. You can choose either to put your new 10 above or below the tens that are already there. For this video, I'm going to be showing above because that is the strategy that I personally use, but you can choose whichever is best for you. Let's try another problem together. 68 plus 26. We have the tens and the ones. I always start with the ones. First, I have 8 plus 6. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's write our 14. Second grade, does 14 have a 10 in it? Yes, it does. So guess where I move that new 10? I put it over in the tens column. I put mine above. You could put it down here below. Either way, we need to add it. Then I move my four ones down to the bottom. Now my ones are complete. Next, I'm going to add up my tens. Six, seven, eight, nine. Don't forget to add that new 10 that we made. So my final answer is 94. Nice job, second grade. Now remember, you can choose to write your number to the side. If you don't need to do that, that is fine. The only thing is, if we make a new 10, we must write it at the top. Because here's what happens if we don't. Let's say we're doing the same problem again. And I say, okay, six plus, six plus eight or eight plus six, that's 14, six, seven, eight. Did you notice what I did second grade? I did not put my new 10 at the top and then I didn't add my new 10. So if you don't write the number to the side, that's okay, but you need to put your new 10 over in the tens column or you're going to forget to add. That's one of the biggest mistakes for second graders is when we add, if we get a problem incorrect, it's usually because we didn't add that new 10 because we didn't write it at the top. We probably say, I'll remember, but then we forget. So we have to write it at the top. Let's try one more problem together. Here's our last practice problem together for today. We have our tens and our ones. We always start with our ones. Here we go. We have five, six, seven. Does seven have a 10 in it? Or is seven larger than 10 ones? No, it's not. So I can just pull it down and put it into the ones place. No new 10 because seven does not have a 10 in it. Now let's go to the tens. Six, seven, eight, nine. So 35 plus 62 is equal to 97. Now, second grade, this is a new skill. It's going to take practice. Keep working at it. Remember, we don't always make a new 10. This problem is a great example. Seven did not have a new 10 in it. So I don't just put a 10 at the top no matter what. I have to ask myself, how many ones do I have? Does my ones have a 10 in it?